There's a line to a quarry at the end of Thomas's branch. It goes for some distance along the road. Thomas was always very careful to whistle here in case anyone was coming. Early one morning, a large policeman was sitting close to the line. Thomas liked policemen. He had been a great friend of the officer who had just retired. Beep, beep, he whistled, good morning. Thomas expected that the new officer would be friendly too, but he was sorry to see that he didn't look friendly at all. He was red in the face and very cross. Disgraceful, he spluttered. I didn't sleep a wink last night. It was so quiet, and now engines come whistling suddenly behind me. I'm sorry, sir, said Thomas. I only said good morning. The policeman pointed to Thomas. Where's your cow catcher, he asked. But I don't catch cows, sir. Don't be funny, snapped the policeman. He looked at Thomas's wheels. No side plates, either. And he wrote in his notebook. Engines going on public roads must have their wheels covered and a cow catcher in front. Fuck you, I don't do that, said Thomas. Don't forget, if you refuse to cooperate, Mr. Policeman will beat you to death. Bullshit, said Thomas's driver. We've been along here hundreds of times and never had an accident. That makes it worse, the policeman answered. He wrote regular lawbreaker in his book. Thomas puffed sadly away. Fuck that lame-ass cop, said Thomas. So Topham Hatt was having breakfast. The butler came in. Tonight we have the marinated bat nipples on a bed of lightly sautéed panda assholes. Honey, did he say bat nipples or cat nipples? I'm allergic to bat nipples, said Sir Topham Hatt. I think I might go with the free-range penguin dick or the deep-dish moose balls. How about you? How the fuck should I know? At the station, Thomas's driver told Sir Topham Hatt what had happened. Dangerous to the public indeed. We'll see about that. Sir Topham Hatt spoke to the policeman. But however much he argued with him, it was no good. The law is the law, he said, and we can't change it. Sir Topham Hatt felt exhausted. No one should ever do anything to help the police in any way, he said. We will have to make those cowcatcher things for Thomas, I suppose. Everyone will laugh, sir, said Thomas. They'll say I look like a tram. Sir Topham Hatt stared. Then he laughed. Well done, Thomas. Why didn't I think of it before? We need a tram engine. When I was on my holiday, I met a nice little engine called Toby. He takes freight cars from the farms, but the trucks are taking over most of his work and he needs a change. He has cow catchers and side plates. I'll write to his superintendent at once. A few days later, Toby arrived. That's a good engine, said Sir Topham Hatt. I see you've brought your coach, Henrietta. You don't mind, do you, sir? asked Toby. The station master wanted to use her as a hen house, and that would never do. No, indeed, said Sir Topham Hatt. We couldn't allow that. Toby made the silly cars behave even better than Thomas did. Hey, you! At first, Thomas was jealous, but he was so pleased when Toby rang his bell and frightened the policeman, they've been firm friends ever since.